Welcome to Tasker 101 Tutorials. This is lesson number 28. Um, and today we're going to be expanding on a uh, uh, previous uh, profile and task that we set up. And we're going to introduce the get voice function. Um, as well as expand a little bit on else if statements. And show how you can have nested else if statements. Uh, I think the correct term is nested. If I'm using the wrong term, I'm sure someone will correct me. Uh, so here we are inside a tasker, and this is a profile we previously set up that shows our uh, text message. Uh, it, well, it announces who is texting us, and then if we're connected, we set it up so that if we're connected to Bluetooth, it will also read the message, but if we're not connected to Bluetooth, it will just display the message. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have it, if we're not connected to Bluetooth, or specifically to the car Bluetooth, it's going to still ask us if we would like it to read the message. And if we say yes, then it will read the message to us. So let's go into the task. Um, just to review real quick, uh, we have it wait half a second, basically because we have a, my uh, ringtone notification last about that long. Then it uh, picks a random variable, and then depending on which variable it picks randomly, or which number it picks, it announces who's texting. So there's three different ways that it might do that. Um, and then we have the if statement. If the car Bluetooth stat matches one, which we set up in a previous lesson, then it'll read the message. It'll say, here's the message, and then read the message. But if that's not true, else, it will uh, show the scene that uh, displays the message. So we're going to add uh, a few things to that. If we're not connected to our car's Bluetooth, we want it to show the scene and we want it to ask us if we'd like the message to be read. So we're going to add a task, miscellaneous, or add an activity I should say, and then say. And we're going to say uh, Shall I read it? We're saying it because it's already said you received a message or you received a text from. So it makes sense to follow up with shall I read it. You could say should I read it. Because my voice engine is a Scottish accent, shall is, sounds better to me. But that's just up to each personal preference. And then everything else we're going to leave the same here. Uh, I'm not going to check continue task immediately because I want it to say this and then execute the next task. I don't want it executing the next task while it's saying it. Um, within the say command, sometimes you will want it to go ahead and continue executing task. But because our next task involves listening for what we're saying, we want to make sure that it's not speaking over that. So we have the say command. Now we're going to, now it needs to get uh, an answer from us. So we're going to go to input and if you select input one of the choices is get voice and that's where it listens for you to say something and turns your speech into text. So get voice. You can give it a title. We're not going to do that. Uh, language model. You can use free form or you can choose web search. We want free form. Maximum results. We're going to say one because this is a yes or no question. So we're just going to have it choose the number one. It should be able to understand you saying yes well enough. Um, Google's, it's using Google's uh, speech to text engine uh, and so if you want it can return five optional results of what Google thinks you might have said. But we're just going to stick to one. Timeout, I have found that it's better to leave it at 30 seconds um, because the way the uh, speech to text works it listens to you and it feels that you've stopped speaking, then it goes to get the results. Uh, if you, I tried changing this to like five seconds or three seconds because it only takes me one second really to say yes. But when I did that, it seemed to continue listening after the duration, long after I'd said yes. And I don't know, for some reason it wasn't working for me. You can play around with that, but we're going to leave it the standard 30 seconds. I figure there's a reason why the Tasker developer made that d the default and uh, it works so we're going to leave it there. And so that's basically it. 
get voice. Now you might have seen there was also a voice command in there. If you choose that, what that does is that launches the uh, 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 voice assistant of your choice. Whether you want to launch Google Now or um, Auto Voice if you have that etc etc and I will stop and say here that a lot of people have talked about auto voice and auto voice is a plug-in uh, sort of a voice assistant plug-in for tasker and very feature rich um, you know way more of that than you can with the built-in tasker get voice uh, but it's you know it's almost like learning a whole different program in and of itself because of all the things it can do so in a future date I may tackle that I'm still learning it myself but for now, I'm going to stick to what's built into Tasker that everyone has immediate access to, which is the Get Voice, and which should work good for, for our needs here. So now that it has received our input, we want it to do something based on that input. So we're going to add an if-else statement. Um, if you wanted to this to be separate from uh, the current if-else statement, I'll show you. You would add an activity and add a task, and you would add uh, uh, end if. And that means you started the if, and then you had an else. Maybe you had several elses, and now you want to end that series. You choose end if. And then it would end that, and it would start a new one. But since we only want this to happen anyway, if uh, the first if wasn't true, if we're not in our car connected to our Bluetooth, we want this to continue to be part of the current uh, else statement. So we're going to start a new if underneath the current one. Now the uh, variable for the get voice is voice. Very simple, all caps. That's, that's what stores whatever it hears from you. Uh, and it stores everything. So if you say five words, all five of those words are going to be in voice. If you say one word, the one word. So if you needed to, you could split those up, and we did a, I did a lesson where I showed you how to split variables. You could split it into uh, voice 1, voice 2, voice 3, voice three, 4, you know, each one of those would carry one word. But since we're only looking for a one word statement, answer yes, we'll leave it uh, as it is. So we're going to say uh, if voice uh, matches yes. So that's our conditional statement. If voice matches uh, yes, then what do we want it to do? We want it to read the uh, uh, text. So we'll go to miscellaneous, go to say, and we'll say Here's the message, and then have it read the message. We can hit the variable tab and go down to the text variables. Text body is what we want it to read, so we're going to choose text body. And now you don't necessarily have to add an else statement. Because if voice matches yes, it's going to do that. And if it doesn't match, then it's not going to do anything, really. But just for the sake of showing uh, the possibility of, of nesting if-else statements, we'll, we'll go ahead and add task. And then we'll say else. Which means if the uh, if that isn't true if voice doesn't match yes then what do we want it to do well let's give it something to do just so we know that it processed correctly we'll say miscellaneous say and I'm gonna say okie dokie So now you see the if else statement, the if else statement, which is embedded inside of this else statement. So if it 
If it hears us say yes, then it's going to read the message, else. In other words, if it, it we don't say yes, then it's going to say okie dokie. So we know it, it registered what we said, and it, we registered that we don't want it to be read. So that's it. Uh, again, if we one if we had other activities after this we wanted to end the if else we would say end if and that would end it uh, you don't have to do that necessarily right now because there we don't have anything else happening afterwards but it's something you need to know in case you did have other stuff happening afterwards that was not dependent upon the uh, this if else series so now uh, let's try it out I'm going to go into the voice. I'm going to here's a test text message. Hopefully it will work correctly. All right. Let's see. As soon as it comes through. You received a text message. Shall I read it? Yes. Here's the message. Here's a test text message. Hopefully it will work correctly. Okay, so it did work. There's a little bit of weirdness going on there. It uh, overtook our display. So let's see if we can fix that. Um, go back down here. So you basically you've seen what you know what it is. You could stop watching at this point, but I want to troubleshoot why uh, the scene uh, didn't stay there. Maybe we have it, the scene displaying as a dialogue. So you could change that. You could have it display uh, as an overlay. I'll say overlay blocking. We have the exit button showing, so we're good. And that way the get voice action shouldn't make the display go away. Um, Let's see, and then under this say, well, let's let's try that out. See how that works. See if that works correctly. Let's try that again. Wait for it to come through. You received a text. Shall I read it? Yes. Here's the message. Let's try that again. Okay, so you can see it did work. However, there's one thing that's still not happening, right? It's cutting off who the message is from. And so that's easy to fix. Uh, like we did uh, down here, we didn't have it continue the task immediately. We had it wait till it said, shall I read it? So that it didn't go over get voice. And it sounds like what's happening is as it's saying this, because we probably have it continue the task immediately, so it's automatically getting to the say. So you can either put in a uh, you can either put in a slight pause before it says ask shall I read it or you could change the uh, the say task to not have it continue the task immediately. Um, I'm gonna have it continue the task immediately because I do want it to immediately show the display scene uh, the scene that shows us the message. I don't want that to be delayed. But I'm just going to add a wait command uh, in here so that it waits to ask, shall I read it? 
So I'm going to long press on that and then go to menu, insert action, task, wait, and let's have it wait two seconds. And that should uh, take care of it. See it? So now it's going to show the scene, but then it's going to wait two seconds before it says anything else. So we can test that out. Test again. And here we go. Wait for it to come through. Edit, Google is texting you. Shall I read it? No thanks. Okie dokie. So, as you can see, it does work. Um, obviously, uh, when it's getting the voice, uh, when it's getting that input, there is a delay. Uh, it takes uh, the Google Voice Recognition Engine a few seconds to accept or know, okay, they've stopped talking. Um, but uh, uh, it does work, uh, and that may be different depending on what device you're using. Um, I, I know when I'm using other voice assistant engines, it doesn't take um, that long to recognize that I've stopped talking. So I don't know why it does. It may just be part of the limitations of the get voice um, action or activity within Tasker. Um, which is somewhat limited. Um, like I mentioned before, there is of course auto voice and uh, auto voice is very advanced and just allows for all kinds of stuff. You can basically create your own voice assistant uh, using uh, auto voice and that's something I may try to tackle for you in a future lesson once I figured it all out myself but I'm still studying it myself. Anyway, that's it for this lesson. This does show you how just within Tasker uh, and the built-in activities that are available to you, you can have it ask you if you want the message read to you, listen for an answer, and then read it to you if you want, or not read it to you if you do not want. So, kind of a cool option, just enhances the whole text message uh, uh, profile that we set up before. Anyway, that's it for lesson 28. If you like this lesson, please click that like button. Know anyone who might be interested or fascinated by it, share it with them through Facebook, Reddit, email, Google Plus, all those fun ways are down there, of course. Check out my channel, subscribe to the Tasker 101 tutorial playlist, subscribe to my channel if you want to know about all the videos I add. Uh, almost 200 Android app reviews, most of which are uh, apps that have some type of utility function to them uh, to make your phone better. Not all of them though, some of them are just for fun. But you can check those out. Also do product reviews, and if you have a dog, I have a dog product review list as well and NFC tutorials. So check all that fun stuff out. And uh, that's about it until next time. So have fun with Tasker.